Welcome to Being Me. I'm Ruthie Tesler, one of the hosts of the Being Me podcast, and my co-host, Be Me Youth Ambassador Juan Bendanya. How's it going, Juan? Hey, Ruthie. It's going good. Doing well. How are you? I'm pretty good. I had sort of a crazy day. It's kind of on theme for our Balancing Extracurricular Activities episode today. I joined swim, like the swim team in my senior year of high school. And it was obviously just for fun. I'm not going to try to be the best on the team. It's my senior year. I just wanted to do it. I wanted to try water polo and I wanted to get in shape before water polo. So the season's basically over. I've only gone to two meets all year, raced three events. And in order to qualify for districts, what I was told is that you have to race in five meets throughout the season. So I was like, okay, I don't qualify for districts. And I talked to my coaches. I was like, I don't qualify for districts. Should I come to practice? They were like, no, it's fine. So I was like, okay, whatever. I won't come to practice. This morning, I come to school. It's like 7.20 a.m. I had like purposely picked out like really comfy sweats and sneakers and a hoodie because I was like, I'm going to stay at school all day today. And that's abnormal for me. So I was like, I'm going to stay at school all day. My first two teachers aren't here. So I'm going to take a little nap. And I was so excited for my chill day at school. I get a call at 7.25 a.m. Where are you? The bus won't leave without you. And I was like, I don't have my bathing suit. I don't have my goggles. I don't have my mask, like my cap. I don't have anything. And I was like, I can't come. I don't have anything. And they were like, it's okay. Like you'll borrow other people's bathing suits and whatever. And I was like, what? I don't want, I don't want to go. I don't like, we're waiting for you. Like run. And I had to run to the bus and then I had to compete at districts all day. So I wasn't home and got there at 8 a.m. I got home at 3 p.m. from districts that I had no clue I was going to. Did you end up using someone else's gear and like hoarding things? Someone happened to have two bathing suits and two caps. And then I was like scrambling for goggles all day, like wearing like 10 different pairs of goggles. I couldn't warm up because I didn't have goggles. It was just like a mess. But you know what? I raced. And I don't even know how to flip turn. Like, I'm a really bad swimmer. I don't know why I did it. I don't even know what a flip turn is. So that speaks to my knowledge of swimming. You know, in the Olympics. Where they like. Yeah. I can't do that. That's insane. Yeah, I probably couldn't either. I'm drowning in that moment. In my race, I tried to flip turn. And then I found myself lost in my lane. I was just lost. I had no clue where I was. And then I had to stop, look around and be like, okay. And then I kept swimming. So I got fourth or fifth place out of six or seven girls. And it just like wasn't it. What an eventful day. Yeah, right. And I have foster kittens at home. So I had to get home to them. And I was like really excited because I was getting home in perfect time to feed them because they eat every five hours. And I was like, okay, I'm four and a half hours since they've eaten. Like I'm home because my mom had texted me like, do you need me to feed them? I was like, no, I'll be home in two minutes. I get home and like I walk in and my mom's bottle in hand feeding these cats and i'm like great how many cats <laughs> really funny. two kittens they're three weeks old oh two okay three yeah. weeks oh my god yeah they're really cute yes. okay anyway enough about me <laughs> let's dive into our check-in everyone wants to know what our favorite halloween candies are and why favorite hello oh also to note before we move on and before we dive in <laughs> uh that the be me podcast this podcast actually won two awards over the past little bit that we've got like a bronze yeah a bronze in the family category and a gold in the listener's choice so for those of you listening thank you so much you know those awards where there is like this won an award of this i'm like who are these people that are voting for these things i always wonder where those people are but nonetheless i know know. (laughs) nonetheless now we can call it award winning which is super exciting Yeah. And the Signal Awards are actually run by the same company as the Webby Awards, which is a pretty big deal on the internet. So I would just like to give ourselves a little round of applause. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) So favorite Halloween candy and why? Are we talking about vintage when we were like tiny little kids going trick-or-treating or like favorite candy now if you want to be like really niche about it just give us like your vintage candy i'm just gonna say a reese's cup or some snickers like something like that mars bar all day long Ooh. was like my thing but i wasn't a really big candy person isn't mars that like, bar is like just the one with the caramel nougat? yeah it's oh. like nougat and caramel 
Sounds good. Yeah. But now it's, have you heard of these sour ropes? There are these like rope. Like, yes. Like the sour punch ones. I think so. They're really? so good. Yeah. I'm like, what about, I'm, a, what about I'm like a chocolate over candies type of person. Yeah. So I think it's pretty even between Snickers and Reese's, but I like peanut butter. I like chocolate and I'll go pretty basic, but I just like those two. Yeah. Not bad. Okay. So it is the middle of our first semester at school. Quarter one is coming to an end. How, I mean, like, how am I feeling about that? How are you feeling? (laughs) I guess. I'm feeling all right about it. I think my grades have never been perfect. I've, like, always been more about learning than getting good grades. So, Mm -hmm. like, the classes that I don't learn anything in, like, you can't get me to do any of their work. So I've gotten pretty, like okay grades this quarter and college applications are among us in the midst of it and it's crazy i just added like five new schools to my list i think like 18 or 19 right now i have to cut down what's your top choice top three top choice i really really liked brown and i still really really like brown but Mm. i don't know like i'm i'm really feeling uf right now It's just like I'm a baby in the cold and I mean, I'd get paid to go and I know people there already. And it's like very like a very much like a rah rah school. And that sounds really fun to me. Yeah, it's a little bit overwhelming and I don't have a therapist. So I always find it really helpful to go on Be Me and get some coaching from the social workers that are always available to talk to. So anyone who's really stressed out, just check out Coaching on Be Me. With Halloween coming up this weekend, what are some of our favorite Halloween movies? Favorite Halloween movie? Oh my gosh. It's a tough one. That is a really tough one. Like I'm trying to think of like best Halloween. Could it be best horror movies? Yeah. Maybe because that kind of like is like Halloween Mm -hmm. adjacent. I don't even know if this would count as a horror movie. Have you seen Shutter Island with Leo no. DiCaprio? Oh, yeah, but I've seen clips of it. It's That it's, is so eerie. That is so unsettling. It is extremely unsettling in the best way possible. Because I'm not a really big fan of scary movies. But I remember there was... Oh, my gosh. Did you see The Last House on the Left? Did you ever see that movie? No, I'm not too okay. big on horror movies. Me either. And it was the only horror movie I've seen in theaters. And I went with a group of like 15 friends in high school and we weren't really supposed to go. And it was this like going to be the scariest movie ever. And then there was this moment where this girl opens this chest of things and it turned out to be like eyelids. And I was like, and everyone's like, oh. and then I thought they look like potato wedges. So then I was like, those look like potato wedges. And everyone laughed. And then some people were angry because they're like, you're like, you ruined the moment of the movie. It was a very polarizing time. But yeah, I would say my favorite kind of scary movie. It's more of a thriller. I like thrillers more than horror. I don't like the jump scare. Like I want to be able to sleep at night, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm a fan of like stupid scary movies. Like I love slapstick. Yeah, like I love like the scary movie and like the scream stuff. Mm -hmm. And I love like the babysitter and babysitter too. I think those are really funny, but they're just like stupid and like way too gory and unrealistic. And they're just really funny. But also I like horror shows more than horror movies. I don't know why. Like I really like the haunting of Bly Manor and the haunting of Hill House. Those two, they're on Netflix really good like stuff like that but halloween movies are not really my thing it's not our jam here at at bb yeah (laughs) (laughs) it really isn't Um, anyway so we have some questions from bb teens jose is asking if you're nervous about something important going on what is the best way to reduce stress if you're nervous about something important going on What's the best way to reduce stress? Well, it depends on what the important thing going on is and what you're doing. But stress isn't always necessarily a bad thing. There's Mm -hmm. actually something called EU stress, like EU, like the letter E and U, stress. And it's stress that's like beneficial. It's like doing a push up. It's like good for you. Mm -hmm. So I think that oftentimes we associate stress with something that we run away from. 
as opposed to something that actually makes us better and move towards. So the first thing I'd say is that stress in moments in life is kind of a good thing because it gets you engaged. It gets you locked in the moment. And then the second thing is what are your ways to deal with stress that you are actively engaging with daily? Like for me, every single day, I'm going to the gym, I'm working out. Because I know that regardless of what stressors are going on in my life, I know that's really helpful. So that's some, that's like my thing. That's something like I anchor to every single day. And yeah, I do it for the health benefits, but I also do it for the psychological benefits. So I would say those two things. Really, what I feel like you have a hot take on what you do when you're stressed or how to reduce stress aside from fostering kittens. I do love my cat therapy. That really helps me. Even like my mom was having a rough week and... I was like, you need to spend five minutes with these kittens. It will open you up. Like you, these cats are magical. They're these little helpless three-week-old kittens that are like so cute and clumsy and you can't help but smile when you're around them. And that's great, but that's also very stressful because I am up in weird hours in the middle of the night feeding them and I have to wake up an extra 30 minutes early, which is like the end of the world for me. And it's just like, that. but it is it's really rewarding. It's just, I don't think it is like a stress reducer. I would say I also love working out. I kind of fell off. So I'm trying to get back into it with swim. I stopped going to the gym, but also swim doesn't happen like every day because mm-hmm. weather and, you know, it's in a weird time in the afternoon, so I can't make it every day. And then I don't end up going to the gym which annoys me. And now that the swim season is over, I'm going to try to get back into it more often, which is I'm very excited for. But I also like, I think we've talked about this in another episode. Like I love driving, blasting music, you know, listening to music is so relieving to me. And then there's going on walks and everyone should do more often, like leave your phone at home and just take a stroll. I should be doing that more. I feel like everyone has their own ways to deal with stress and you just have to find what works with you and make sure you're sleeping enough. If you need to sacrifice like one perfect homework assignment for another hour of sleep, I say do it. That's a hot take. But I say prioritize sleep. Your body will thank you. And moving on. Janelli asks for tips on time management, especially when you're an AP honor student or you're in a sport. Oh, Janelli. Very cool name, by the way. Janelli. Uh, tips on time management. Most of us have time that we give away to things unbeknownst to us. So the best thing that you could possibly do in terms of time management is awareness. And that is going to your phone and going to general and going to screen time and then going to see all activity. And looking at how much time do you spend, and I'm not saying social is a bad thing, but I just, to see how much time are you spending on social every single day, and could you reduce that by an hour or by 30 minutes, and then you just won 30 minutes in your day every single day over a year, that's a lot of time. So I would say like awareness around how much time you spend doing things that are not moving the needle. And sure, there's time for social. There's time for doing things that aren't productive. But especially when you have AP, honor classes, you have sports going on, you have all of these being pulled in all these directions, you want to make sure that you are eliminating the things that don't necessarily need to be there. For sure. Janelli, I can sympathize with you. I am an IB student and I play a sport. And it's tough sometimes, but... I feel like when people are saying it's impossible, they're almost saying that to make themselves like feel better about like brag about not having no work. They're like, oh, my life is so hard. I feel like the best mindset is to be like, I can totally do this. This is Mm -hmm. so within my caliber of things that I'm able to do and I'm going to kill it. And I do have time and Whenever there's a free minute in school to do homework, I'm going to take it instead of going on my phone, putting my head down. I'm going to do my homework in school so I can have some downtime at home to go and watch a movie, do things that I enjoy. I think you just have to switch your mindset from like, this is impossible to this is challenging, but it is so doable. 
because so many people do it and succeed and also have lives outside of school. You can do both. I think the most important thing is maximizing your potential like while you're in school Mm -hmm. and just trying to get anything done that you can during school hours so you can have more time at home for the things you enjoy. Or you can go to your sport without that weight on your shoulders of I have so much homework when I get home. And that way you can perform well in your sport. Just helps so much. Agreed. So then Quinn wants to know, what was the best day you've ever had? What message would you deliver to kids about their mental health? Okay. Uh, So kind of two separate questions. So I guess we'll tackle them one after the other. The best day I've ever had had to be probably this past year. I got engaged here in Florida and we did this. We planned this like massive surprise for my fiance, Gabby, on the beach. And we had 40 people that half of which she had no idea were even going to be in the country. Like they came from Canada, they flew in. So I was like going to meet them at the airport and then taking them to the hotel all while she thought I was just like running errands. And it was honestly, it was a pretty stressful day. But at the end of it, like having everyone there and seeing everyone on the beach and seeing everyone being able to celebrate with everyone was just awesome. So that was probably the best day I've ever had. And then what message would I deliver to kids about their mental health is that even on the hard days, that's when you really build the resilience and the grit and the drive and the resourcefulness and the do whatever it takesness to handle things that life throws at you. Like it isn't about showing up with joy or being happy when things are easy. It's showing up when things aren't. Like it's easy to feel good when everything's going well. It's really easy to feel happy when everything is great and you have a good friend group and you got into your number one pick and all of these different things fall into place. And when you finally are able to do your little like the pool flip turn thing and be able to swim to the other side, like everything's great when it's great. But when it isn't, that's the true test I find to taking care of your mental health is understanding that you have to show up for yourself on the hard days even more than you do on the good days. That's going to require more of you. It's going to take more effort, more determination, more compassion, more presence, more awareness than on the days when everything's going well. I think also you said it, showing up for yourself. Sometimes the most selfless thing you can do is prioritize yourself. If you prioritize your own well-being instead of saying yes to everyone around you and being like, quote unquote, selfless, you will be a miserable person and you won't have anything else to give at one point. You want to make sure that you're taking care of yourself before you can take care of others, put your own oxygen mask on first sort of thing. I think that's definitely one of the most important things for kids to remember about their mental health. I don't really know what the best day I've ever had was. I can't put a finger on like my favorite day ever, but... I'll just say right now that I went to Panama over the summer with my entire extended family and I got food poisoning. So I was sick and then I got up the next morning and I was still sick, but then we went on the boat and it was beautiful and I was still sick, but like I was having so much fun and I was jumping off the boat and snorkeling and whale watching the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in my life with my entire family. So sick. Didn't even matter. I went on to like the top of a boat and I jumped off the boat with my 78 year old grandmother. It was just like a magical day. And then I wasn't sick at night. So it was, that was good too. But okay. Quite I mean, the turnaround. That's to my head. It was a good I day. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to segment three. During mid-semester, balancing extracurriculars with academics and a social life can be challenging. So let's discuss the benefits and difficulties of managing all three. How can teenagers balance extracurriculars ac- activities with their mental health and emotional well-being during a busy mid-semester? Oof. That's a great question. I feel like something that a lot of people struggle with, even outside of school, it's like, how do you balance whether it's school and life or work and life or life and relationships or relationships and work. And I feel like I need to strike the perfect balance. And it isn't true. It isn't about 
balancing school and extracurriculars and social life because then you feel like you're kind of holding three plates and you only have two hands. Mm-hmm. And that can be really overwhelming and that, that could be really taxing, especially when you have a busy semester. So the better thing is to have them be integrated in a way where you are prioritizing and giving energy to all three. And that starts by making sure that every day and every week you are taking time for yourself to recharge and do recharging activities so that you can show up to all of the things as your best. Because when you have extracurriculars and then you have school and then you have social life and you have all these things, like you want to think about the kind of person you want to bring to all of those situations. That's the first. And then the second thing is you have to learn and become best friends with the word no. You have to be able to say no and draw a demarcation line in the sand and say, listen, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. And that, like what you were saying, Ruthie, before, it's not selfish to take care of yourself. It's actually selfless because when you take care of yourself more, you show up better with others. You show up better for others. So you've got to be able to say no to things that are not an absolute priority and necessity because it's so easy to people please and say yes to everything. And then you feel like you're burning the candle on both ends and being pulled in all these different directions and don't know how to cope. You create space for yourself in your calendar. You create space for yourself in your life. And you do that by saying no. You guys couldn't see me, but I've been nodding pretty aggressively this entire time. I completely agree. I think saying no is so important. I just recently learned how to do that. And I think a lot of people, especially like people around my age, especially I would say first semester of college too, they overbook their calendars, they oh, overload no. their coursework, they, they take on too many classes because they think it's normal to take eight classes in college when that's such a high school thing. And they take on too many clubs and then you can't show up to any clubs because you have too many meetings or you have too many classes, too much homework. I joined like two clubs this year and I've gone every GSA meeting this year and I've loved it. And I've gone to every meeting for my other two clubs that I've joined. And it's been great. And if I had joined eight clubs like I've done in the past few years, like for three years in a row, I wouldn't go to any of these meetings because all these group chats would be overwhelming me. I think it's just like striking a good balance. I know it's hard to do, but just knowing your limits is so important. Knowing that you can't do everything and do it well. You have to do a lot of things, enough things, and do them well. And the opportunities will always be there. There's this FOMO and this fear of, I'm never going to get that opportunity again. That group of friends is never going to hang out again. I'm never going to be able to. It's like, that's not true. It'll happen again. Don't go to things because you don't want to miss out. Go to things because they sound genuinely appealing to you. Yes. If you think that something is going to drain your whole social battery, don't go. If you think is going to make you feel like energized after a long day and make you feel really good, then go. Yeah. So just balancing the best thing you can do is not take on too much. Um, There's no like mindfulness tips to get you out of like way too many things going on. Like just don't do all the things. Moving on. Are there any tips or strategies for setting realistic priorities and boundaries regarding extracurricular commitments? Yeah, that it kind of speaks to what we were talking about of learning to say no, but it's also understanding your role in each of those extracurricular commitments. Don't overcommit. Don't just like you want to say no to things. Don't say yes to too many things and don't overcommit and say, oh yeah, I could totally do that. And I can do this. And yeah, I'll volunteer every other Tuesday for nine hours a day. Like (laughs) just don't overcommit and be clear and have clarity on why you're even joining this extracurricular, why you're doing this sport, or why you're part of this club, and what you hope to give and what you hope to get. And what you hope to get isn't like a selfish, like, oh, no, 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 I shouldn't think of what. No, no, no. You should absolutely think of what you want to get out of this experience. You want to take from this experience and learn from it because sometimes people show up in this self-righteous, oh, I just want to give mentality, and then they burn themselves because they overcommit and give away all their time. 
Instead, you need to, yes, be clear on what you want to give, but also be intentional and clear on what you would like to get out of this experience. Because when you do that, you'll know what lines to draw. You'll know what boundaries to create and you'll know what priorities to set. I completely agree. Again, it comes back to it's not selfish to put yourself first. Mm -hmm. So I think those boundaries and the priority of making sure that you are getting something out of this, that way it doesn't feel like a chore is so important. Totally. You don't want anything you do besides like the annoying homework that you have to do, like something you're taking on that's extra. You don't want it to feel like a burden. You want to do that because it's fun or because you are getting something really meaningful out of it. Like when I joined swim, I was like, this is for fun. I'm not going to stress myself out with this. I'm going to have fun. I'm not going to work my schedule around swimming. If I can't go to a day of practice, it's okay. This is going to fit into my schedule and I'm going to make the meets and I'm going to work hard, but I'm also not going to like kill myself over it. It's not going to hurt me. Okay. So if you do need help besides listening to this podcast with any tips of how to organize your day or any self-care, Juan and the BME coaches are available on the BME app, which is you're able to download it for free on Google Play in the app store. So I would urge you to all check that out. And that being said, this has been a great talk, Juan. Thank you for coming on with us. Or of course. Thank you for always coming on with us. Yeah, great. thank you again for having... I feel like you're the host of the show and I'm just kind of the guest. Thank you again <laughs> for, for having me. Echo what Ruthie said in all of the conversation that we've had. If everything feels like it's all happening all at once and it's all stacking on your plate... BME is such a good resource and it's such a good place to go when you feel like all of those things are happening and you're overwhelmed and you're stressed and extracurriculars and friends and just go there. Check in, take a beat, take a moment for yourself. That was the whole purpose and mission of BME from the get. So make sure you go check that out. And until next time, my name is Juan Bendania and my co-host, which is really like the host host, Ruthie Dessler. And our amazing producer, who at some point, I'm just putting this out there, is going to make a guest appearance on the pod. He has to. He has to just come in and say hi and say hello or something because he literally keeps this ship afloat. We are all reminding you to keep being you. And together, let's make this the best year ever. The Being Me podcast is a Being Me Studios production of Being Me Health. 